Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I have the privilege uh, today to discuss uh, an interesting journey that we are going through as a country and as an institute. Of course, first we have to figure out uh, getting the clicker to work, but that's okay. Uh, I think um, one of the things that I think is undoubtedly is the journey that UAE has gone through in building the nation. Whether it is the phase of building the infrastructure, whether it's the phase of building services and commerce, whether it's the phase of digitizing the entire country and many, many other parts to this journey. But as we all know the, the story, this is not enough. We are now at the age where we are driving advanced technologies and innovation and really moving to a knowledge economy. And within this, you could start seeing the creations of advanced universities and technologies, the creation of industries in, 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 in this field. And we were given a very clear mandate uh, to drive. And the challenge started with we want to be a country that is developing advanced technologies to solve our local and global challenges. We want to be a country that delivers on three key objectives. Elite talent, globally and locally. Solving challenges and problem statements that we have locally and globally to drive a knowledge economy. And last but not least, is really to develop a local and a global ecosystem that connects us to the world to address the challenges we are all facing. All of this was in a time where we needed to move extremely fast. So what took other countries 30, 50, 100 years we needed to do it faster. What, what we needed to do was to move with a new operating model. What we needed to do is best practice wasn't frankly good enough. We needed to create the UAE operating model to get there faster. I'd like to use an interesting uh, analogy. A few months ago, we had in the country here the Formula One race. Hopefully many of you enjoyed that. And if I was to compare ourselves with entering to the Formula One race, we were asked to join the Formula One race with renowned teams. But we didn't really have a car built. We really didn't have a full engine developed. We really didn't have a team yet. But we needed to enter the race, and we need to enter the race to win. What that meant from a psychology point of view, while other teams could stop in the pit stop, there was no time for us to stop to change our tires in the pit stop. We needed to change our tires while we were racing. We needed to build the engine that needed to be built while we were on the turn. We needed to change the gearbox while everyone else had already a gearbox in, in this regard. And to top it all up, just to add a bit more spice, all of this mandate was there and COVID hit. So just to give it a bit more excitement in terms of the challenge that we needed to face. So let's look at the objectives that, uh, that we all had. If we start with talent, and this was a, a major objective that we need to deliver on, the starting point was we don't have a large bench in the UAE of researchers and advanced technology. We have many other things. We're not yet known for a large research bench. It will take too long to build the capabilities based on the speed of where we want to get there. We needed to flip the perceived disadvantage to an advantage using some of our critical assets as a country. We approached every talent around the globe, 
with one silver card or one bullet card that we had. This is a nation that has been open to many nationalities. This is a nation that is tolerant and welcoming of many nationalities around the globe, which meant we went out hunting the best talent globally to get them here. If that talent was on the moon, we will get him. I mean, many, of course, have heard of the UAE's Mars mission. You think we're looking for water over there? We're actually looking for talent. Well, that's part of our secret plan. To enable all of this, we needed to change classical policies that were there. Normally, as a, as a government research center, traditionally, most of the researchers have to be nationals. Well, we updated the policies and we said, we will welcome nationalities from around the world. The best of the best, we will get them here. We told the best talent from around the world that this can be home. You're not here for a temporary period. You're here to be part of this society in this regard. You're here to be part of the fabric of this country. Some were given golden visas, some were given a path to nationality. We fused all of them with some of our amazing national talent to be part of this ecosystem. What did this all result? It resulted in talent hitting the ground running. It resulted in national talent within a period of two years. I mean, we were just, you know, the decree came out two and a half years ago for ATRC. Within two years, some of these talents are in this room already winning renowned awards in research and technology globally. What does it translate to in terms of actual results? Within two years, we have 750 advanced technology researchers from 71 countries. 144 are UAE nationals. 55 of the UAE nationals are female. I'd really like to stop on this point. The ladies that are in, in, in this group, the 55%, did not come because we had a quota of saying we need 50-50 gender. Every one of the member of the female that are part of this group won their seat because they deserve winning their seat. It wasn't because of quota. It wasn't because of anything else in this regard. We have some amazing talent in this country in advanced technology. If we look at the other objectives, the second one, which is we needed to solve problem statements that we had. We need to solve challenges that, that we have rather than just do research for the sake of research. The, in Abu Dhabi and in the country, we had set six priority sectors. Health, food, security, sustainability, aerospace, and transport. These are our priority sectors that we were focused on, but we needed to operate with agility and operating model that really removed a lot of bureaucracies of the system. While focusing on these areas, we wanted to make one point very clear. We are not a research center for the sake of research. We needed to be practical, we need to be laser focused on addressing our national challenges in this regard and eventually global challenges, which meant we are researching very clear problem statements. We've identified very clear clients that really need these challenges to be addressed, and only then did we embark on our, on our research. And with that, we launched 10 research centers seven at the beginning and three last year. And they vary, as you could see, between quantum communication, autonomous, advanced material, and so forth in this regard. All of them serve the priority sectors that we have. What did this deliver to us? We have over 100 active projects that we're engaged in. We have over 60 projects that are above TRL4 level. That means it's in it's getting to an advanced stage of research. 
and we produce over 500 research papers already out there. What this is doing for us is we're already starting to build an interesting critical mass. We're starting to position Abu Dhabi and the UAE in the world map when it comes to research and technology. If I'll give a bit of a flavor on, on, on some of these, part of these 100 projects. We already launched a teaser last year of what we refer to the large language model where we had the first Arabic article written in Tahad newspaper fully written by AI. By the way, we started, we saw a trend building for this over a year ago. Of course, now nobody can stop chatting about ChatGPT. This is an area that I would say stay very tuned during this year to hear a few more announcements from us in this field. If I look at what we are doing in terms of quantum encryption, there are very little countries that have already produced algorithms that can be quantum resistant to attacks using quantum computers. We have some of the largest and strongest teams globally in encryption. If we look at what we've done in the field of quantum and quantum computing, we've already produced the Arab world's first quantum qubit. And we are on the journey of working to produce our first quantum computer as a full stack in this regard. Yes, it's a long journey, but it's a journey we started and we already have a number of steps in this field. The fields are vast based on the technology centers we have. We have technologies in solar that today are at an advanced stage of applying coating material to improve maintenance and to improve productivity of these solar panels. These are all challenges that we face as a nation and the globe needs as, as a solution. Transport and autonomous transportation. We already have an advanced stage of GPS-less transportation in this regard, already in the works and already in trial phases. On humanitarian part, we've already developed an advanced testing stage of very innovative, efficient, and fast scanning to find mines. So you can send it to humanitarian parts around the world to clear mines, part of the challenge that part, parts of the world face today. Last one I want to mention is quantum communication. We will launch this year the first part of intercity and hopefully into next year, intercountry in this regard, quantum communication, part of our key solutions that we deliver. These are parts of the 100 projects that we have. The last point, and I think one, some of the most interesting point that I want to touch on is the ecosystem. We've already embarked since the last two years in mobilizing the local ecosystem, whether it's in policies, whether it's in streamlining number of players in Abu Dhabi in, in this regard, whether it's universities, uh, research centers, funding uh, in, in this regard. How do, we, how do we promote researchers in this ecosystem? A lot of these initiatives have launched. But frankly, that was not enough. If we needed to compete and we needed to punch way above our weight, as a country in this field, we needed to connect the globe to be part of us. So we went out and we started reaching globally to many institutions, to many entities in that regard to link them and be, to be part of our fabric. So we got in touch with the best of the best institutes to build a global ecosystem where we have a number of research centers that are working on our problem statements, on our challenges, they are tied to us for the next two to three year programs where we co-fund, their teams are working with our teams on our challenges. What does that actually mean? And what did it deliver? We have over 70 global projects that we've embarked on with 50 universities globally. Some of the best, of best names are in here. I want to clarify one point. These are not MOUs that we signed. We are not in the MOU business. These are very clear, detailed two to three year projects where they are tied into our problem statement, into the 100 projects that I'm talking about. 
They are working with our team hand in hand with named individuals in these universities that are able to now focus and a laser focus on the problems that we have. What this is giving us, it's giving us a start of an initial critical mass so that when our leadership and our entities locally and globally are asking us to address challenges, we have the team locally, we have the technical board of advisors, and we have the global network to focus them very clearly on what we need to address. With this, I think the ingredient of what nations need to do to achieve advancement in technology or to create that ecosystem, one thing that we, we realized very early is this is not a copy-paste arrangement. In reality, one formula that one country followed cannot be copied easily to another country. Otherwise, every country will have a Silicon Valley part to it. Every country will be Israel. Every country would be China. We needed to come up with our own formula and really leverage our own strength card in this journey. You can't just copy another formula in that regard because you don't have the same ingredients. What we wanted to leverage and the cards we had in our hand we can move very fast. We are agile as a country and nimble. We are open to partnership globally. We are not a closed society that just wants to do things internally. We are welcoming global talent to come. And I think there is a key card that we leveraged on the max. If there is one thing that is making us live during the golden age of innovation and technology, it's this point. It's a point where this individual, and I'm not exaggerating, I'm underestimating in this regard, and I'm downplaying, the time allocated, the focus allocated, the guidance allocated, and the unwavering support to push advanced technology in this country is happening due to one individual, which is the president of this country, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. I am seriously downplaying the effect he's having and the focus he's driving technology. And I would read, and if I was to, if I was to wish and have a, a wish list of what support a country needs to drive its technology, I cannot be wishing for more than what we are getting from the leadership of this country. These are the cards that we are leveraging to get to where we need to get. This is our golden ticket to go to where we are going. We've achieved a lot. We've done a lot in the last two years. But frankly, it's not enough. We are looking to move extremely fast. We are looking to deliver on our promises, whether it's sovereign technology, whether it's partnership in an ecosystem, whether it's building a very strong capability base in the country here to drive technology and create a pathway to the nationals in this country, to the people living in this country, to enter the advanced technology field and see that as a career path and as a destination in, in this regard. Looking at where we are now, partnering with UAE, and I would leave you with these two closing statements. The, the steps that we are taking in the next one or two years, we're already going to launch advanced technology startups this year, basically in our third year of startup as an organization. We are already embarking on engaging now at country level with other countries to really partner in the field of research and technology to solve global challenges. And there is a fantastic opportunity today to work with the UAE. And this is a call to action in my mind. We are a nation that is moving fast. We are a nation that believes in this journey. And as per the UAE track record, 
Nothing has improved impossible to something that was determined as a country and by this leadership. And what others call impossible, what we would say to them is, what you refer to as impossible is just the starting point of our journey. And this is the time to partner, and thank you very much. Thank you.